Hi friends. I'm coming with another story today. Um, I'm going to tell you a couple things before I start. The name of the story is The Giraffe Who Went to School. And I brought a giraffe with me today. <laughs> this giraffe is kind of funny because it's sitting down <laughs> instead of standing up. When we were at Disney World and the Animal Kingdom Hotel we stayed at, I never saw a giraffe sitting down. I think it's pretty hard for them to sit down. In fact, I don't even know if they're capable of it. I'd have to read up on that. But what did we see them doing? Do you remember? If you don't, your moms can show you some pictures of what when we took pictures of them. They could reach those long necks up into the trees to get what? their food from the trees, right? They would eat twigs and, you know, parts of the branches and leaves and their long necks could get there like no other animal around could get, right? They were fun to watch, weren't they? And they were right outside our window. Well, this story is about a giraffe named Alice. <laughs> and before I get started with our friend, um, this, oh, by the way, this giraffe's name is Twigs. This is a little name that came with her on her little tag. She's Twigs the Giraffe. <laughs> um, one other thing I want to tell you is a little, a little something that will help you with a project you can do in a few weeks. Um, we're in the middle of the month of April right now. It's April 16th today. In about two weeks, next week as well as birthday, and about a week after that, roughly, is the first day of a new month called May, May 1st. Well, this time of year that we're in right now is called spring. I think you know that, but if you don't, it's the, the time of year when winter is ending, the cold and the snow, and the type of weather where we have to wear the warm coats and hats and mittens and all that. Christmassy weather <laughs> is, is ending. And spring has started and all of us have been seeing flowers blooming outside, of different colors. The grass, have you noticed, is much greener than it was. The trees that were bare and had nothing on them except the branches, the sticks of the branches, now have little buds growing on them and some of them have little leaves coming out of those buds. And some have flowers on them. So it's really a special, it's my favorite time of year when everything is, is new and fresh. And May Day, which is May 1st, is a day that we celebrate spring. Many people used to celebrate it in the past. They don't do it as much as they used to, but I've always loved May Day. And when your mommies were little, we used to celebrate. And you can ask them to tell you about that. We used to get, we followed a tradition that I learned from my mom, is you would get a little basket and put some little present in it, like maybe something to eat, maybe some flowers, maybe a note that said you liked someone or you loved them or they're your friend and you're glad or a little toy, anything. You put it in a little basket and you go put it at that person, whoever you're going to give this basket to, you go bring it to their front door, you ring the doorbell and you take off. It's not to be mean because if you do that and have nothing with you, that is kind of not nice. But it's to be a surprise present. So that's called a May Day basket. So I'm just going to show you a couple of ideas so maybe in a couple weeks you guys can do it too. You could use a cup or a bowl like you guys eat out of it at, at um, you, you boys, Marcus, Mason, and Melka eat out of those bowls that are all different colors. You could use one of those. You could get a basket. Maybe you have something like this from Easter or a little bigger or a regular actual basket like I've got here. This has some trim on it, but you don't have to have that. Um, when I was little, we used to get strawberries at the grocery store in these little baskets. Now you get them in a clear plastic container. Uh, you take the lid off and take the, red, the strawberries out, as you guys know, because I know all of you like them. This is what they used to come in, a little container like this, and it had plastic over the top so the berries wouldn't get dirty. And these were perfect for May baskets, and that's what your mommies used. Sometimes we put a ribbon in it. I think that I left this one from one of the girls. This is like ribbon you use for your, your packages um, when you wrap maybe a birthday present or a Christmas present or something. A 
a ribbon like that or maybe you have a big ribbon I have this one left from another many years ago <laughs> maybe your mom has a big ribbon from packages or hair or whatever so anyway those are some cool ideas to use to make that and to put in it like I said some people brought flowers uh, make a little maybe these at this time of year I don't know if you can see this, this is a little like a violet it's not exactly a violet but it looks a lot like it and violets grow in the grass and when you go for walks with your mom look in the grass and you might see some little purple and white flowers they're called violets and they're really pretty but they grow wild they grow anywhere right now this is my flower I brought up here a while ago and it's starting to get a little dry but this is a daffodil from outside if you take any flowers from your yard, ask your moms first. Just make sure because you don't want to damage any flowers. The other day, my pastor and her daughter stopped by and brought me some flowers. Well, not just me, Grandpa and me. <laughs> and left a note and said, hi, we miss you because, you know, we can't go to church right now because of the, the sickness, the virus. And she all they also left a chocolate Easter bunny, which Grandpa and I have been working on and have finished. It was really good. So candy, cookies, snacks, flowers, whatever you think of, something pretty that you see that you think somebody would like, you can do that. And if you go to a neighbor's house, well, then talk to mom about that because of the social distancing and all that. But you could do it to someone at your own house. Think about that. And then you don't, you just run and hide and they find the basket. And you could even do it inside the house. You don't have to go outside. You could do it in front of someone's bedroom or the kitchen or somewhere where you know they're going to be. So anyway, I'm telling you about May baskets because that's a fun hobby. So, I mean, um, hobby isn't the word. Activity that you can do. So this is like a craft lesson too. And the other thing I want to tell you about is that there used to be a tradition on May Day they did it in schools. I have a good friend that is a like great grandma's age who told me she used to do it at her school and she enjoyed it every year. It's called Dancing Around the Maypole. People in the country of Sweden, which is close to Norway, where Elsa and uh, Anna are supposed to be from, they do, this is the custom originated around there and they still, I'm pretty sure, do it every year. Here is a picture in the book, I'm giving you a heads up, of a maypole. It's like a long pole that's taller than your head. They sometimes decorate it with some flowers on top and then they have all these different colors of ribbons hanging down. And these children are holding the ribbons. Everybody holds a ribbon and dances around. Some people dance to the right, some people go to the left, but there's a certain plan to it. So you're not, while you're going around, you're weaving the ribbons around the pole so that they can make a beautiful, design here they're all loose and you can't see any pattern but if they were to continue going around with those ribbons they would be almost like a braid like when you braid your hair like girls braid their hair it would be the ribbons would be woven inside and make a pretty decoration and it's just kind of a fun celebration to celebrate spring new life new growth new flowers new trees and grass and all that wonderful stuff that God gives us every spring when the weather starts to warm up. All right, now I'm gonna read the story. <laughs> so you'll know when I get to that part what I'm talking about. Okay, the giraffe who went to school. Here's some pictures to give you a, get you acquainted with a giraffe and some girls that are gonna be in the story. Oh, this is an old book. I think my, I, well, it's older than me actually. I think my older brothers and sisters maybe had this one. In a big old-fashioned house, two ladies had a school where they taught four little girls. The ladies' names were Miss B and Miss D. Here's Miss B, she's tall, and Miss D, who's not so tall. <laughs> and they both look like friendly, nice ladies. Well, instead of a regular school, the school was in a house, so it's a little different than like where Marcus goes and where you kids go to preschool and daycare. The four little girls were Mary, Anne, Nancy, and Pam. They learned how to read and write and sew. So, just like Marcus has been learning how to read and write his name, and some of you are learning how to write your name, they also learned how to sew because that's a good thing to learn when you're a little girl. And 
a boy too. So they learned all kinds of things in school and they also learned to sing and dance. There's one of the teachers, Miss uh, B, standing in the middle and they're dancing and singing around her. And sometimes you guys sing in school too, don't you? They had French lessons too and they were taught to say some French words. You know, you guys have learned some Spanish words. I know you've all of you have shared them with me. But in French, they learned to say, pardonnez-moi, which means pardon me in French, and s'il vous plaît, which means if you please. And they learned those words and others. They probably could count in French too. And they also learned to have good manners, to walk tall and nice and gracefully, to say those words, excuse me or pardon me. And they were nice to each other if they needed help. Well, down the road from Miss B and Miss D's school was a small zoo where Alice, the tame giraffe, lived. Tame means she wasn't a wild animal like the ones we saw. She was tame, like a house pet, like a dog was the tame that they're used to being with people. Every day she would stretch her long neck out as far as it would go. Remember those long necks? They were so tall I can't even reach with my hands to show you. She would stick her long neck out as far as it would go and stretch and look over to where Mary, Anne, Nancy, and Pam were playing games and reading books under the big trees in the yard. There she is stretching way over so she can see the girls in their school. Oh, if I could only go to school, sighed Alice. I would be so good and study so hard. Oh, I wish I could go to school. Well, one day she decided this. She got up very early. She walked out the front gate, down the road, and she followed Mary, Anne, Nancy, and Pam right up to their schoolhouse. And Miss D, well, let's look at this picture first and then I'll tell you the next section. Here they are. The girls are walking. The other girl you'll see on the next page. And they're like, wait a minute. Hey, this nice giraffe is following us, but that's kind of fun. They look kind of happy about it. And Miss B and Miss D were rather surprised for they had never had to teach a giraffe before. This was new. And the girls pleaded and said, here's Alice, or excuse me, not Alice, here's Mary and Anne saying, please, please, Miss B, please let Alice stay. And they said, here's one of the girls and you can see, but they were all begging the teachers who were looking up. Let me show you the whole page so you can see better. There's Alice and the teachers are looking up and they're thinking, oh dear, what should we do? And the girls, the other girls, Pam and Nancy said, please, please, Miss D, please let Alice stay. So Miss B and Miss D decided they'd be delighted to have Alice in their school. Now, she got in the classroom and they got ready to, to start their class. And the, Miss B said, now we will all stand up straight and tall and sing America. I don't know if you've ever sung that song, but some people do the Pledge of Allegiance. Then they look at a flag and put their hand over their heart. <laughs> some sing a song and they were all gonna sing a song together about being living in America. So, Miss B told the girls to stand up. So everybody stood up. But what happened when Alice stood up? <gasps> Uh-oh, the ceiling in a house or in a school, whichever, any building, is not usually high enough for a giraffe in a regular size building. And what did she do? Oof, ouch, she bumped her head on the ceiling. Well, this is going to be hard for her to stand up. Well, the next activity, Miss D said, is now we will all sit in a circle and read. Alice tried and tried, but she simply couldn't get comfortable in her little chair. And here she is in this little chair. Now, that chair does not look like it's made for a giraffe, does it? It's sort of like the three bears when we were trying to imagine bears sitting in different chairs. It looked like they might fit in them, but this one, uh-uh. Poor thing, she just can't get comfortable and she's not used to sitting on that kind of a chair. And as far as reading, learning how to read, well, as big as she was, Alice just couldn't learn her ABCs. We are so sorry, said Miss B and Miss D. 
but Alice will have to go back to her own home at the zoo. Aww, then she won't be here tomorrow for May Day and dance around the Maypole with us, cried Mary, Anne, Nancy, and Pam. Oh dear, oh dear, everyone was so sad. And you know who was the saddest of all? Atlas. Because she had to go back to the zoo and not be with her fr new friends. Well, and here she is the next day. She stretched out her neck and she saw the children gathered around that maypole. That's the picture I showed you earlier. They were getting ready to celebrate and you know what Alice did? She cried. Big tears ran down her pretty giraffe face, and she was so sad. The maypole looked lovely, and she wanted so much to be with them instead of just looking on and, and not being with them. Well, suddenly, a little breeze started to blow, and it blew, and then it blew, and then it blew some more, and it blew itself into a great big wind. Have you ever been outside when the wind is so strong? Your mom says, come on inside, it's too windy to play. Well, that's what happened that day. It blew the four girl, little girl's hair ribbons and the sashes, and it blew Miss, Miss B's frilly blouse and Miss D's ruffles on her skirt. Whoosh, whoosh. Here they're trying to hold those ribbons and the ribbons are flying out of their hands. And everybody's like, oh my goodness, where'd that wind come from? And worst of all, it blew the maypole right out of the ground, up into the air, and out of sight over the treetops. Well, the wind took the maypole away. And what a dreadful thing to happen. Who ever heard of a May Day without a maypole? And what in the world were they to do? Miss B was distressed. And Miss D was distracted. That means she didn't know what was to do next. And Mary, Anne, Nancy, and Pam were so disappointed that they what? I don't know if you can see in this picture, but they have teardrops running down their faces and they are all crying. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Our maypole day is, is, my maypole is gone and our May day is ruined. But Alice, she'd been watching. She'd been watching everything right from the zoo. I wonder, thought Alice, could I help? I wonder, maybe I could. I wonder, yes, I'll do it, she said, and she raced down the road and ran to the garden. So there she is leaving the zoo again. It's got a little flag on the building and she's taking off, <laughs> running as fast as a giraffe can go. And Alice was talking too, see. Shh, quick, said Alice to Miss D, get more flowers. So Miss D got some more beautiful flowers. And she said, quick, quick. To Miss B, get more ribbons. And so she did. Lots of pretty colored ribbons. And then she said, quick, 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 <laughs> to the children. Fasten them on my head. I'll be your maypole. So on her tall head near her neck, Mary, Anne, Nancy, and Pam put their ribbons. And then they danced around Alice and sang their May Day songs. And here is a picture of Alice and the ribbons. And she's got flowers on her head and the, and the ribbons all around. And the girls are doing this. Well, some go one way and some go the other. And look what's happening. The ribbons are twisting and turning and they're making a beautiful braided look on her long neck, which is like a pole in a way, isn't it? The girls had so much fun. They danced and sang and danced and sang. It was the best May Day that the girls had ever had. And they also decided that Alice was the best maypole they'd ever had. And the teachers, Miss D and Miss B, agreed. <laughs> well, even if Alice can't read or count or play games, she can still be the most beautiful maypole in the world, said Mary, Anne, Nancy, and Pam. And this made Alice very, very happy. She thought it was the very best thing anyone had ever said about her. And after this wonderful day, she knew she would always be happy in her home at the zoo.
So she was okay with being there after all. But you know what? I bet every May Day she came to visit and be their May Day pole again. Right there. And that's the end. So this May Day, maybe you can celebrate with a May pole, which is a little more involved, but at least a May basket or box or whatever you find. That's another thing I forgot to show you. You can just do the box. And that works good too. But have fun and make someone happy. Bye.